today is I'm using a keyboard in my music studio but this will show you the basics of how organ draw bars work so whether you've got a, a keyboard at home with draw bars on the screen you've got a, an electronic organ with digital draw bars maybe perhaps those are your own Larry organs at home or maybe a, a Versi or a Hammond with physical draw bars on the panel this 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 video will show you the basics but virtually all organs and practically all keyboards in the last sort of, I suppose, 10 15 years have got some form of draw bars on them. Now, how do they work? Okay, well, what you have to understand is that these numbers here at the bottom represent organ pipe lengths. Now, we have to go back to the 1920s and 30s when a guy called Lawrence Hammond came up with this. A mechanical, electrical mechanical organ, uh, which was known as the Hammond organ. And Hammond was a great fan of church organ uh, instruments, and he wanted to make an organ that basically produced the sound of an organ that you'd hear in the church for your services and weddings, but with no pipes. And so after lots of experimenting and uh, production, went ahead and firstly came out the very first Hammond organ. Now, if I pull out by pushing this button here, this is exactly the same as me grabbing hold of the drawbar like this and pulling it out. I'm going to pull out the 8 foot drawbar. Now that means that I'm playing a tone which is the same as a set of, let's say, diapason organ pipes and the biggest pipe in that set will be 8 feet long and it sounds a little bit like this. There we go and that is the same pitch as on a piano so we call 8 foot concert pitch so middle C is the same as middle C on a piano and on a pipe organ. So what Mr. Hammond decided to do was to produce a pull-out stop that basically allowed you to replicate what you would do on a pipe organ. So if you pull out an 8-foot stop, you get a sound a bit like this. Now the numbers 8, 4, 2 and 1 are representing octaves. So if I hold middle C with the 8 foot drawbar out, let's pull out next door to it the 4 foot drawbar. And you can hear another tone has been added to the first one. Now what the 4 foot drawbar does, it plays the sound one octave above the note that I'm playing. So if I play middle C, and then I pull out the four foot drawbar, draw bar, and I then play middle C again, I'll actually hear the next C up the octave. Now I'm playing the same key on the keyboard here, middle C, 
but I'm hearing the sound one octave higher. So when I pull out the 8 foot with the 4 foot and I push one middle C key, I actually get two tones, two C's. So 4 foot is the next octave above 8 foot. Let's skip over the next one and go to the 2 foot. This is two octaves above the first one. So now we get three C's. And you guessed it, <laughs> number one is one, two, three octaves above. So now I've got four tones playing, a middle C, C above, C above that, and then the next C. Now, of course, when you then play a three-note chord, let's say a C chord, a triad, C, E, G, I've actually got four C's, four E's, and four G's which is why the organ has such a very rich sound to it. You have to imagine it's like cellos, violas, second violins, first violins, lots of instruments all playing the same notes. Now, what if I then pull out the 16 foot? Well, the 16 foot is the other way. Instead of an octave above, it's an octave below. So we then get the C below middle C, the next one down, and that produces a much deeper sound. And now with these draw bars, the best way to start experimenting with them is just pull them all the way out or all the way in. And that's a good way just to start. Let's try the 16, the 8 and the 4. Now you see, because we haven't got the higher pitches on, We've got a lower, more mellow sound. Let's put the 8 and the 4 away and bring out the 2 and the 1. But we've still got the 16, so we've got a deep sound. So imagine this like a double bass, and then a violin, and then perhaps another violin playing on its higher octaves. Now what if you notice on my screen here, it says rotary speed set to slow. Now that's the the old spinning speaker, we call those Leslie speakers. Now, history recalls that Mr Hammond actually wasn't a massive fan of Leslie speakers. He didn't want his organs sounding like this. Around the same time as Mr Hammond, there was another guy um, uh, who made an organ which I've uh, played for many, many years now, and I work with the UK dealer of this organ company. Uh, Allen's Music Centre in Great Yarmouth, and the, the brand of organ is, of course, Lowry organs. Now, Lowry, Mr. Lowry, he loved the sound of the theatre organ. So he wanted this rich sound coming from his Lowry organ. He went for tabs, like on a theatre organ, but he was a great fan of the Leslie Speaker because it gave him what, a th what a, essentially a theatre organ tremulant does, these boxes that vibrate and wobble the air as it goes into the parts it creates vibrato. And you get those lovely sounds by having the speaker spinning on fast. And of course you can vary the speed like this. Now, on a pipe organ, the draw stop as you come out is basically just an on-off switch. It, it turns a set of organ pipes on. If you pull out an 8 foot draw stop, the pipes make a sound, push the draw stop in, the pipes don't make a sound. Now what Mr Hammond did, he came up with this idea that he could vary the volume. And therefore, you could create a much bigger range of different registrations or mixes of different sounds. So, if I pull out the drawbar all the way, I'm at maximum volume. Now I've got eight levels of volume on my keyboard. A Hammond, uh, if I remember my history correctly, has nine. Some organs have ten. So but it's, it's normally between eight or nine. Now that basically means I've got maximum volume on my eight foot organ sound. Let's put the Leslie on fast. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the four foot out to half. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of the two foot and the one foot. Just peeking out there on their first level of volume. Now that's, that there is a, is a new sound. Now you can hear that, that's quite mellow so there's a little bit of brightness on the end. Let's bring out the top ones a little bit more. 
and the fourth a little bit more. Now that will add a bit more brightness to that same registration. Let's take in the two foot and leave the others where they were. And let's now bring out the sixteen foot. Let's take the eight foot in and just have him out a couple. Maximum four foot, a little bit of two, and just a little bit of one. Now you hear those all sound brilliant, can't you? And what a very simple system. So let's recap. The number at the bottom represents the length of the organ pipe that this drawbar represents in a pipe organ. So the eight foot on a drawbar is like an eight foot organ pipe. The one foot is the one foot organ pipe rank. The 16 means that the lowest key on the keyboard is a 16 foot organ pipe. And that's how it works in pipe organs. But the number that you pull it out, the more you pull it out, the louder that pipe gets. Now that's the difference on a drawbar system. You can vary the volume of your organ pipe. That means that on here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine drawbars. Virtually all organs have nine drawbars, certainly on the upper keyboard alone, um, and uh, some home organs have a smaller set for the lower, but virtually all organs will have nine to produce many, many different sounds. Now, people then go, OK, so I'm with you so far, I get that the numbers mean eight foot organ stop, four foot organ stop, and so on. What about the ones with the fractions? These things. Well, in organ speak, the numbers that have whole numbers, so 8, 4, 2, these are known as your fundamental tones. Okay, these are called fundamentals. And fundamentals are there because they will produce the sound that matches the key that you play. In other words, if you play an F, those three drawbars, the 8, the 4, and the 2, will all make the sound of Fs. If I play middle C, they'll play C's. If I play a G at the top, they'll play the G's. I'm going to put all the drawbars in. I'm going to bring the 8 foot out. These next uh, ones next to it in between, these ones with the fractions, 2 and 2 thirds, 1 and 3 fifths, 5 and a third. That just means the lowest organ pipe in that rank, that's how long it would be, 5 and 1 third of a foot. Now, why are the numbers there? Well, these represent something in, in musical sound that we call overtones. And overtones are what make instruments have their different sounds. So in organs, we have overtones to colour the fundamental tones. So if I have a, say, pull out the two and two third, what that will do, or depending on which one it is, instead of playing it, if I play a C, instead of the overtone one playing a C, it might play an E or a G, depending on which one it is. Listen to what happens when I hold middle C with the 8 foot organ flute out, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly add the 2 and 2 thirds, and your ear will hear a second musical pitch being added. Now what that's actually doing is this one. And so then you get this sound. So you hear there's a harmony going on. Let's pull out the one and three fifths. Hey, what a great sound we're now getting. Let's try the one and a third. And lastly, let's add the five and a third which, um, incidentally, is actually placed below the eighth. A lot of people get confused with that. But what this does, it, it gives you the harmonic, the note in between those two. And the one in between is G. So it's a fourth below. Oop, wrong button. Now you can hear that that creates a very different sound. So think of the harmonic drawbars, these ones that produce overtones. Think of these as 
spices to your basic ingredients. So you're eating your four, you've got your you know your chicken or your, your beef or whatever or corn <laughs> and then you add spices like cumin, salt, pepper and listen to the possibilities that we can actually get by adding these particular things. Bring out the one and the third. Let's have a nice bright top end. Let's bring out the top three. Push these in. Let's bring out a little five and a third. Let's bring all the draw bars out. Big sound. All right. Let's make a little little bow shape. I'm just just messing around here and making different registrations. And you can hear as you mess around and make different sounds. You can get some fantastic noises just literally by listening. And if it sounds good to you, then believe me, it's a good sound. This is what happens though when I do this. Ooh, okay, that's, that's changed that setting quite a bit. I've stopped the rotary from spinning fast and I've put it to slow. Now that registration then becomes totally different. So you've actually got two registrations there, one with the same settings with the rotary on fast, and then your slow setting gives you a second one. You can even turn the Leslie off completely. We can make the sound completely disappear which gives you a almost a, sort of a colder more straight church organ sound so a lot of cases you can get three versions of the same registration now have a listen to some registrations here in a little number <laughs> settings there in my keyboard. Now in the next video I'm going to show you how to mix those draw bars with some nice famous registrations uh, which are used by jazz organ players, ones that are really nice, nice for swing numbers, ballads and so on. But if you search around on the internet type in draw bar registrations into your favorite search engine you will find uh, loads and loads of probably free sheets you can download that will give you lots of really nice uh, things to try on your organ at home. So I'm going to say thanks ever so much for watching Draw Bar Basics. Any questions please comment below and if you enjoyed the video please do positively comment. Please uh, like the video, share it if you want to and if you'd like to subscribe to Keyboard Skills Pro that would be absolutely fantastic. Beneath the description here there's also a link to my Patreon page uh, obviously these videos do take time to produce, so if you'd like to support me in sharing my knowledge with you, that would be absolutely fantastic. Please do visit the link at the bottom. So thanks ever so much for watching. Uh, my name is Tom Horton and I'll hopefully see you very soon here on Keyboard Skills Pro.